When one works with probability, um, a continuous probability here, like we do in our class Math 3700 here at Southern Utah University here. Uh, so, I mean, we're, we're talking about how calculus can be used to help you study probability. We have a whole class of calculus-based statistics and such. Uh, just as, This is just a kind of preview of why integration has anything to do with statistics here. Now, often what happens is that we have a probability density function whose domain is an infinite interval, maybe the entire real line. It could be that any possible assignment of real numbers could be given to x. How does one describe a probability in such a situation? Well, we'll be interested in things like, well, what's the probability that x is less than b? Uh, which, by a previous remark, the, the probability that x equals exactly b, of course, is zero. So that's no difference in saying x is strictly less than b or x is greater than or less than or equal to b. Um, this is going to turn out to be an improper integral. Uh, if you want to find the probability that x is less than b, it's going to be the probability from that. It's going to be the integral from negative infinity to b. Similarly, if you want to find the probability that x is greater than a or greater than or equal to a, this is going to be an improper integral from a to infinity of f of x dx. If you take the probability that x is going to be greater than negative infinity and less than infinity, notice you're integrating the entire domain of the density function. Of course, that's going to be a 1 because it's a density function here. Now, but let's take a look at an example of why that might be appropriate. Suppose that a random variable x is the distance in kilometers from a given point to the nearest bird's nest. So if we were to leave our classroom and go look at tr different trees around our neighborhood or around the campus, how, how far do we have to go before we find a tree in a bird's nest? Or, sorry, that's a weird thing to say, a bird's nest inside of a tree. Uh, and so in a certain biome, uh, we can model the distribution of that bird's nest by the function f of x equals 2x e to the negative x squared, where the domain is going to be x is greater than equal to 0. Negative doesn't really make any sense here because we're talking about a distance, but potentially that distance could get arbitrarily large. Like if we one day woke up and we're on the moon, um, there's going to be a huge amount of distance before we have to go, before we find the nearest bird's nest, you could imagine from that. So this could get arbitrarily large, but of course, uh, it's not likely to get very large. Let's first convince ourselves that this is a density function. To be a density function, it has to first be a positive function. Now notice that e to any power is always going to be positive. So in particular, if we take the negative x squared power, uh, this is always positive. Um, and then because of our domain here, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. If you take the product of these two things, it's going to be greater than or equal to 0. You throw a 2 in there, it's going to be greater than or equal to 0. That part's usually pretty easy. Um, to show that it's a density, we, we have to check the domain. As we go from 0 to infinity, why is it that 2x e to the negative x squared, why is that equal to 1? Well, we can compute this using a u substitution. Take u to be negative x squared, hence du is going to equal negative 2x dx. So I need a negative sign to correct that fact. I'm missing one there. And so if we make the substitution, this is going to be the integral of negative e to the u du. Looking at that. And also change the bounds, right? As x goes from uh, 0 to infinity, what happens to u? Well, as x approaches 0, uh, negative x squared will also go to 0. That's great. And as x approaches infinity, u is going to go towards negative infinity right there. And so if we change the bounds, we're going to have 0 right there, negative infinity right there. And so then swap, swapping up the order here, you're going to get negative infinity on the top, 0 right here, e to the u du. All right, well, what happens now? Integrating, you're going to get e to the u from negative infinity to 0. When you plug these things in there, you get e to the 0 minus e to the negative infinity. Um, as x approaches 0, the exponential will become 1. And as x goes to negative infinity, you're going to get a 0 there. So we do get the area under the curve is 1. This is a valid probability model. We can use this to model uh, the distance to the birds. We, we'll, we'll let the biologists figure out whether this is a good model or not. But we, as mathematicians, can see that this is a legitimate probability model. Whether it's a good model or not, again, we'll let, we'll let the biologist and those who study the birds to worry about that. So using this probability model, what is the probability that the nearest nest will be within a half a kilometer? So we're asking, what's the probability that x will be less than or equal to 0.5? So with respect to the density function we are using, uh, we need to calculate the integral from 0 to 0.5 because you can't get less than zero so that's the lower bound there 
And then our function was 2x e to the negative x squared dx. Uh, again, to calculate this integral, we probably want to do a u substitution, the exact same u substitution as before. Uh, so we want a negative sign like that. Uh, really, the only thing that changes are how we change the limits. Uh, you have an x and a u, 0, 0. And so now when you have a 1 half, when you plug that in there, you're going to get negative 1 fourth or negative 0.25 if you prefer. And so the calculation this time is going to look like the integral from negative 1 fourth to 0 e to the u du. Antiderivative, we know it is again e to the u as you go from negative 1 fourth to and 1 there. So you get 1 minus uh, e to the negative 0.25 or if you prefer one minus one over the fourth root of E, that's an option. Uh, but we, we'll just estimate this thing with a calculator. We want a percentage. Uh, and with your calculator, you get a 0.2212. So there's about a 22% chance that, uh, you know, a little bit less than a quarter of a chance that if you go half a mile, you'll find a bird's nest uh, in, in, in some tree. So we're talking about a, a one half radius, one half kilometer radius around there. So these calculations work out pretty nicely. And you'll also kind of notice that as you do these, these integrals over and over again, you're gonna have the same antiderivative. Oftentimes you want to come up with a formula for this antiderivative. And this is actually the main difference between like a calculus based statistics class and a non calculus based statistics class. The thing is, as we can see in this example, to find the probabilities, we have to find the antiderivative of the density function, uh, which we can do because we know calculus, but students who don't know calculus can't do that. So what instead happens is that the instructor prior to the class calculates the antiderivative of the most commonly showing up uh, probability density functions, and then they just teach those as the functions to the students and they never have to do the calculus. This works, in special situations, but it only is going to work for uh, a few standard uh, probability density functions. Unlike this example, which they wouldn't stand much of a chance of, uh, we have to be able to calculate. We have to be able to calculate these using calculus. Um, calculate uh, computing statistics without calculus is kind of like doing physics without calculus. It's just absurd. It's like watching uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, you know, part two, without watching any of the previous Harry Potter films. You have no idea what's going on here. I mean, you, you can appreciate the movie, right? It's still fun, but you're wondering yourselves like, who's Harry Potter? Why does he have a scar? Who's this Voldemort guy? Why doesn't he have a nose? Um, you have these unresolved questions because we don't know what happened beforehand. The same thing happens to statistics. Without, without the use of calculus, it's really unsure to us. Why is this called the central limit theorem? Well, because it's a limit theorem. Um, which is coming from calculus here. So uh, I digress here, but be, it, be aware it's important to recognize how, how connected calculus and probability are with each other. You really shouldn't divorce the two. They should be together working in harmony.